Hi gamers, and welcome to checking out my Sega Master System games. As you might know, I'm a Nintendo guy at heart, and uh, of course I had an NES when I was a kid. And actually I didn't personally know anybody who owned a Master System in those days, so they were pre pretty rare in my neck of the woods. But uh, of course, I've uh, since then I've acquired the console and uh, some of its uh, pretty great games. After all, it was a more powerful console than the NES was. But uh, I just have here a pretty small collection, 20 games, and uh, uh, I don't really have uh, that much uh, stories to tell about each of the games. Like I said, I didn't really uh, experience this firsthand when it was. Uh, brand new but uh let's check out what i have here i got a, a pretty nice collection of uh, a few important exclusives and some great ports here first up a couple of let's do a focus first yeah we got afterburner and uh, another example altered beast both of which were originally sega's uh, arcade games. Sega did a huge amount of arcade games and of course they uh, were great assets to their home consoles as well. These were Many of these were ported to uh, both the Master System and uh, Mega Drive, so it uh, tells a lot of uh, the power that the Master System had uh, when they were able to handle these ports. Of course they were uh, highly uh, highly stripped down on the Master System, but still fun games to have. Especially Afterburner. Afterburner is a, a technically demanding game and it's really not at its best on the Master System, but still still playable. Altered Beast is pretty a pretty great port here. Then we have Alex Kidd, High Tech World. Alex Kidd was before Sonic, uh, basically the uh, mascot of Sega. There were a total of five games starring him on the Master System, so he was pretty prominent uh, uh, here. And uh, yeah, all five came out before the first Sonic the Hedgehog game, uh, which is coming here later on a Master System as well. But yeah, Alex Kidd was pretty popular popular character but of course he wasn't wasn't any match for Mario in terms of uh, popularity or games sold but still uh, a very uh, important uh, game series for Sega American Baseball <laughs> not much to say about that Casino Games Great volleyball, and uh, this must be one of the <laughs> best covers of all time. Uh, I, I kind of like that they had this uh, really simplistic grid uh, design here for all the games. They look pretty uniform on the shelf, uh, but uh, yeah, mostly they had some nice uh, illustrations as well. But yeah, the great volleyball wasn't really one of those. <laughs> Choplifter is uh, not much better, uh, but still, of course, Choplifter is a, is a classic arcade action game. And even more so, you could say about Double Dragon, classic, classic game. This is, uh, Sega Master System, uh, like I said, had a lot of arcade ports. Uh, this one isn't made by Sega. But uh, Sega managed to secure some of these games as well, even though Nintendo did have a quite an uh, iron uh, ironclad <laughs> uh, take on the or hold on the console business then. But Sega managed to squeeze out some some games for their consoles for sure. Ghostbusters. This uh, I'm. I've played this quite a bit on the Com uh, Commodore 64. That uh, that one I did have, in addition to the NES. So the console ports on the Master System are 
uh, or uh, especially on the NES, it's uh, the NES version is, is the poorest of them all. Master System version is it's pretty great, but still I, I guess I prefer the Commodore 64 version. And here's my only example of a Sega card. Here's Ghost House. Uh, but let's check out here. Oh. The games uh, themselves came on these pretty small cartridges. But there was also this second uh, second way uh, Sega made made games came on these little credit card sized cards, which were slightly uh, slightly cheaper games, but they were smaller in uh, capacity, so they couldn't be uh, too big the games themselves. But these were pretty pretty nice, fun way of having the games. Put it back there. And then we have a double feature, Hang On and Astro Warrior, the combo cartridge, so two separate games, Hang On being one of my favorite arcade games of all time. I gotta love the dedicated uh, motorcycle arcade cabinet. Uh, the Master System version isn't really, <laughs> really up to par. Uh, and uh, then we have a, an Astro, Astro Warrior, a shooting game here. Oh. A shoot 'em up game as well. Indy, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Uh, not to be mixed up with the uh, point and click adventure game, this is just a uh, side scrolling action game. Lemmings, really great uh, classic game. Uh, now I have to, I guess there wasn't a mouse peripheral for the Master System, I guess it says here you can control it with the control pad or the uh, control stick or the arcade stick. So not not that playable without the mouse, but uh, yeah there were plenty of ports for, of Lemmings, one of the biggest hits, hit games of the era. Marble Madness, a classic, classic arcade game, was also ported to many, many home consoles. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really great. Of course, the arcade controls were uh, very uh, highly superior to the, uh, uh, con uh, the, the controls of the home consoles with just a D-pad to, to control the uh, marbles here. But still, a nice game to have. Then we have another double feature, Marksman Shooting and Trap Shooting, another combo cartridge. And uh, this used the light phaser uh, gun, which was very similar to uh, the NES's Zapper gun. And here we have like clay pigeon shooting here, like on the uh, Duck Hunt, the second game there. And uh, but yeah, well, of course, uh, a console wasn't a console if it did, didn't have its own light gun game. Then, Outrun, another super classic Sega arcade game. You really haven't lived if you haven't played Outrun in some shape or form. It's really one of the greatest uh, racing games ever. But then. What I would say the most important game on the Master System, the first Fantasy Star game. This is where it all started for Sega's classic RPG game and really one of the most influential ones at that. There weren't, weren't many Japanese RPGs out before this came out and uh, it was really, really something else. Uh, actually was one of the first games to feature a, a woman as a main character, so pretty progressive uh, in that respect as well. Really great graphics, some really uh, really classic um, 
classic innovations here and uh, something that were were uh, carried over to many other games uh, after that and something that was really really unique I guess even to this day uh, even though uh, the name is Fantasy Star. This isn't a, a traditional fantasy game, of course. It's spelled out with PH, not with an uh, F. Is that this uh, is set in the future, and uh, yeah, you do have flaming swords and uh, and spells here, but it's uh, actually set in the year 3240. So, really, a, a unique, unique game and game series, all in all, Fantasy Star. And then we have a really, <laughs> uh, really uh, dirty copy of Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, Sega also, uh, after they, uh, they made uh, Sonic for the uh, Mega Drive, uh, of course, uh, in particular, they did port it over to the Master System as well. And this is a pretty decent port. Of course, it, it's missing some bells and whistles, whistles that uh, the Mega Drive version had. But still, this is a, quite an impressive feat to have uh, running on the Master System. And then, a couple of games to go. Tennis Ace. And finally, Thunderblade, uh, a top-down shoot 'em up. And that was it for my Sega Master System collection. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.